Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. And today's video is all about the Union Jack or the Union flag, the flag of the British. Now we've got a prop here and I'm gonna use it to show you how the flag was put together and a little bit of history behind it. So the Union flag or the Union Jack, what actually sparked us to do this little film uh, was uh, we found this in the museum where we volunteer, it's a military museum. And this is a history of the Union Jack, uh, prepared for you by Laura Secord Candy Shops. Well, a bit of a surprise to me because we live in the middle of Canada now. And this tiny little thing all opens out and shows you how the Union flag develops. You know, from uh, 12th of April, 1606, under James VI of Scotland, first of England, Oh, there's an interesting thing, isn't it? It was a Scotsman who actually brought all of this together. But it wasn't until uh, 1801, if I remember correctly, that George III actually formalised the Union flag. And I've got to read you this because I could not memorise it. Um, it's from a proclamation of George III. And he stated, And that the Union flag shot... Actually, he probably said it with a German accent, didn't he? So I'll try and do it in a slightly German accent. And that the Union flag shall be azure, the crosses, saltires of St. Andrews and St. Patrick quarter. I can't do this. Hang on a second. He said that the Union flag shall be azure, the crosses, saltires of St. Andrew and St. Patrick, quarterly, per salter, counterchange, argent and goyles. <laughs> the later, fimbrated of Scotland surmounted on the cross of St. George and the third, fimbrated as the saltire. Wow, I have no idea what that means. But there again, I am not from the College of Coat of Arms. I'm just Kevin. So let's have a go with this little lovely piece that was a giveaway from a candy store in the middle of Canada a few decades ago. So here we have our prop, which tells you all about the history of the Union Jack, Laura Secord's candy shops. This is a, a historical piece. We've borrowed this from the um, Saskatoon Museum of Military Artifacts. Um, now let's open it up and show you how this actually works. So unfold the whole lot. There we go. So we have a cross of St. Patrick, a little bit of blurb about the tradition of candy making, great. Then we have the cross of St. Andrew, the Scottish flag, yeah, and it tells you all about St. Andrew and all of that. Then we have the cross of St. George, but if you turn this page over, it tells you about the cross of St. Patrick, and how St. Patrick came about and all of this. And then if you close over, there you have the Union flag. And this is just such a simple, lovely giveaway thing from a candy store in the middle of Canada. And it explains to the world how the Union flag or the Union Jack came about. So, Union flag or Union Jack? Now, I was always taught in the army that it's the Union flag because the Union Jack is the little pennant that goes on the front of a ship. But also, Jack is a medieval term for coat, which may have had coat of arms over the top of it. This could roll on, couldn't it? But at the end of the day, the Union flag, brought together by a Scotsman, when James VI of Scotland becomes also James I of England, and he brings about this Union, yeah? And in 1606, on the 12th of April, the Union flag is put together. It's the Cross of St. George, and the Psalter, the Cross of St. Andrew. And then there's an argument. Should the Cross of St. George be on the top of the Psalter or the Psalter on top of the St. George? Oh my goodness, we're great, aren't we? Yeah, and then they add Ireland, which of course is the three countries to make up the Union flag. But hang on a second, they're missing somebody. Wales. It's not represented on the Union flag. And the reason being, apparently, was way back uh, in those times, Wales was incorporated into England. So they just didn't bother with it. Now, it's interesting because should things change in the future with, with, with Britain 
Uh, so Scotland separates, yeah, becomes its own independent thing. That will change the flag. And the heraldic people are already looking into this and they've come up with one idea, which I think is quite neat. It has the cross of St. George, the red hand of Ulster, and that red dragon of Wales in each corner. Who knows what the future will hold? But anyway, now let's give you a story about my own Union Jack. Or is it flag? You know, especially having served in the army, flags are important. Uh, when I was stationed at Helmstedt in Germany, one of your jobs, if you were on the desk, was to put up the three flags, uh, the Berlin garrison, the uh, regimental flag, I've got one here from the Royal Military Police, and of course the Union flag. And you always had to make sure that the Union flag was done the right way up, yeah? Flags are important, yeah? National, pride, all of that kind of stuff. And I didn't realize the importance other people put on my flag, the Union flag, the Union Jack, until I'd, uh, I'd been on a, a job on my own in the uh, military police up in Cyprus on the Turkish border there. I've been there for over a couple of years. Uh, it was a unique position where I policed an area that had been subject to so much violence. They got so many problems. Anyway, I dealt with it and uh, I loved it. And the Queen thought I was really good, so she decorated me for it. And as I was leaving, everything's all packed up. My police dog, Mark, he's been handed over and my heart's are thumping because I'm leaving behind a wow piece of my history. And one of my um, Turkish guards, Mehmet, came up. He, although, he, you know, I say he was Turkish guard, he worked for the British, but he was a Turkish Cypriot. And an absolute tremendous individual. And he come up to me and he used to do these little salutes. Mechaba Umbashid, he would say, and I'd, I'd say, hi, he, and he got a tear in his eye. And he said, uh, we have a present for you, Umbashid, a leaving present. And I says, you didn't have to get me anything. I says, your friendship, you, you people here have been fantastic. And then he handed me a lovely little brown paper parcel with string, just old fashioned, you know. And he gave me a hug. And I says to him, you look after yourself, yeah? Now, these Turks had lost everything. Their village had been subject to a massacre years before. So these people, they were kind of my people. My gunner protected them. And as I got on the bus, there they all lined up and waved me goodbye. Somebody else was going to come take over my role. So I'm on the aeroplane flying home to England. And uh, I remembered the little parcel. And it was in my little bag there, so I took it out and I opened it and this is what it was. It's a Union flag. In fact, a British Army Union flag. And uh, I was a bit, oh, oh. And then I found the little letter that was with it. And it was from my Turkish friends. And Mehmet wrote, Dear Corporal Hicks, before you came to Pergamos, it was a dangerous place. Drug trafficking and violence. When you came, we were so glad to have you that we issued, were issued with a new flag. And when it was the Queen's birthday or a special parade, we put your flag up and we all saluted it. After two years, you changed our area from a dangerous place to a peaceful place. So the last bit of the letter from Emmet said this, said, Umbashi, when you look at the flag, remember us, please, because we will never forget you. So I hope you've enjoyed our, our little film. Well, if you liked it, thumbs up, please. Those of you who are already a subscriber, hey, thanks a bunch. If you're not a subscriber, hey, Ding the bell, join in and have some fun with history. Bye for now.